Hello, this video is one of the modules on offer as part of the Foundation Online Training Course. Our unique course has helped over 10,000 people to study for their Foundation exam. And the course consists of online lessons, videos like this one, quizzes and mock tests. To access our free course and to get the latest version of this video and our collection of videos, go to www.hamtrain.co.uk Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with Amateur Radio. Hello, my name is Pete and this video is part of the Foundation Online video series for those looking to get amateur radio licenses in the UK. In this video, we're looking at the RSGB band plan and the four page exam booklet that you can use during your foundation exam. The booklet is known as the RSGB's EX307 handout and there's a copy on the RSGB website. We've also got a short link to take you there quicker. The web address sxham.uk forward slash EX307. You're allowed to use all four pages of the booklet for your foundation exam. We can skip the cover, it just gives you some basic information, and we'll take a look at the second page, which is the foundation license parameters. Now what we have here is a full list of all the frequencies that foundation radio amateurs are allowed to use. In the first column, you've got the frequency bands. You can see we start with very low frequencies, and at the bottom of the list some very high frequencies, up as high as 10 GHz. So you need to be familiar with how to use this particular table. The first column gives you the frequencies. The second column confirms whether that frequency band can be used by radio amateurs, and whether it's on a primary or a secondary basis. Primary means that the frequency range is allocated first off to radio amateurs. If an allocation is secondary, it means we're sharing it with other users. Some of those may be the primary user. Obviously, primary gets priority. The third column shows whether the frequency range can be used for amateur radio satellite. And the fourth column covers the maximum available power that you can transmit for those frequencies. There's quite a few frequencies available at Foundation, but there's a few common ones. If you're interested in working the world, you might be looking at the 80 meter band, which is 3.5 to 3.8, the 40 meter band, which is 7 to 7.2, the 20 meter band is another popular one, that will be 14 to 14.350 oh megahertz. 10 meters is quite popular, 28 to 29.7 megahertz. And for local contacts, you'd be looking at between 144 and 146 megahertz. Or the UHF range, 430 to 440. There are some exceptions, and the reason you're given this in the exam is you'll need to refer to them. An obvious exception, and quite a common exam question, is the frequency range 431 to 432. If you look in the second column, it says secondary, not available for use within a 100 km radius of Charing Cross, and then it gives some grid coordinates. Charing Cross is a known central point in London. The primary user for this frequency range is the MOD, and for reasons best known to the MOD, they don't want people transmitting within the London area. For that reason, you cannot use those frequencies within 100 kilometres of central London. The next exceptions relate to the fourth column, which is all about your transmitter power. For many of the common frequencies that you'll be using, including 80, 40, 20, 10 and the 2 metre band, there is a maximum of 25 watts, but you should note there are some exceptions. The first entry in the table has a limit of 1 watt ERP. We'll talk about ERP in a second. If you scroll down to the UHF band, 430 to 431 and 431 to 432, you will also note an ERP restriction. So what does ERP mean? If you've completed module 4 of our online course, which is feeders and antennas, you'll know that some antennas have a gain. The most common type of antenna with a gain is a Yagi. 
the gain is measured in dB. And the ERP, the effective radiated power, is calculated by the power that you're putting into the antenna multiplied by its gain. So for instance, where it says 25 watts on the foundation parameter sheet, that's 25 watts into the antenna. If the antenna has a gain, you can multiply the power by the gain. On the fourth page of the exam booklet, you'll see the dB conversion table. So if you have an antenna with a gain of 3 dB, that multiplies the power by 2, so your 25 watts would actually radiate 50 watts ERP. And before you ask, that is perfectly allowable. Although you may think you have a limit of 25 watts according to the table, it's perfectly allowable to radiate more than 25 watts. The exception is if there's a frequency allocation marked ERP, and there are some in the foundation parameter table. For example, if we look at the entries between 430 and 432 megahertz, you will see there is a limit of 25 watts ERP. Thinking about the maths, if you can't radiate more than 25 watts ERP and your antenna has a gain of 3 dB, that means you can only put 12.5 or half of the power into that antenna so that it radiates the full 25 watts. If you're not sure about any of that, I'd advise you to take a look at Module 4 of our Foundation Online course that talks about antenna gain and ERP in more detail. That hopefully covers the Foundation License Parameters table. Let's look now at page 3, which is the band plans. What you're given in the handout is only a sample. The real band plans for all of the amateur radio frequencies can be found on the RSGB website. You'll also find a copy in the RSGB's annual yearbook, which is a highly recommended book to have. It's well worth printing out your own version of the band plan for the frequencies that you want to use, so that you've always got it to hand. There's quite a lot of information on the band plans, and it's very difficult to memorise all of it. For the Foundation Exam booklet, they give you two band plans. They give you the 2 metre band plan, 144 to 146, and also the 20 metre band plan, 14 to 14350. So let's take a look at the 2 metre band plan first of all. In the first column you've got the frequency range. So the first item here, 144 MHz to 144.025 MHz. The second column gives you the necessary bandwidth. The bandwidth isn't really covered at foundation, but effectively we're looking at the width that you can squeeze your content into. So for instance, Morse code is very basic data and doesn't need much bandwidth. If you're looking at doing high quality FM speech, the bandwidth is wider. You'll find out more about bandwidths at Intermediate. So the columns you really care about for this band plan are column number 1, which is the frequency range, and column number 3, which is the UK usage. What you'll note from any band plan is the narrow modes that use the least bandwidth tend to be at the top of the page, or at the lower end of the frequency range. So on the 2 metre band plan, starting at 144, you will see telegraphy, which is a posh word for Morse code, or CW. The third entry down says telegraphy centre of activity, and that's 144.050 MHz. Centre of activity means that's roughly where you start, and you can use frequencies either side of that. So if you know you want to do some work with Morse code, you'd possibly start off with 144.050 as the centre of activity. If you follow the list down, you start seeing some abbreviations creeping in. On page 2 of the exam booklet, you'll see some notes that help decode some of this information. Let's look further down the band plan. So after the Morse code section, we start seeing a reference to MGM. That is machine generated modes, or what we'd more commonly refer to as data modes. This could be RTTY, PSK31, any of the JT modes, all sorts of other different data modes. Again, these are quite narrow bandwidth, so they tend to be at the top of the band plan. Scrolling further down the list, we see 144300, and it says there SSB Centre of Activity. So that's the centre of activity for if we want to use single sideband. 
Module 3 in our course, on transmitters and receivers, explains more about single sideband, but generally, if you want to get some distance from 2 meters, you'd be using SSB and not FM. The next item of note is 144.4 to 144.49. This is marked as propagation beacons only. Propagation beacons allow you to tune into a set frequency to see whether you can hear a beacon, gives you an indication of how strong that beacon is and how well your receiver is working. Now, beacons are meant to be transmit only, so you cannot transmit on a beacon frequency. One of the next ones of note is 144500. This is the centre of activity for a mode called SSTV, or slow scan television. This is where you can send pictures that are coded into sound and sent over amateur radio. I'm not going to go through each individual line, I'm just highlighting the important ones as we go along. Next, if we look at the range 144794 to 144990, you see a lot of references to DV Internet Voice Gateways. So this is where you have a digital voice handheld and you want to connect it over the internet. This would allow you to use your handheld to communicate to your computer and the computer can then connect to the internet and send your signal around the world. The frequency of 144.8 MHz is another interesting one. That's listed as APRS, which is all about amateur radio positioning. Amateurs that like to move around can use APRS to transmit their longitude, latitude and call sign so that you can find them on a map. If you want to look at this, take a look at the website APRS.FI. Continuing down the list, we now get to 144.990 to 145.1935. Here we start getting into repeater territory. Module 9 of the Foundation Online course talks about repeaters, but basically a repeater can be used to extend your signal. You transmit to a repeater, and the repeater retransmits it on a different frequency. By default, a repeater has two frequencies, an input frequency, where it will receive your signal, and an output frequency. The range we've highlighted here is the repeater input frequency. This can only be used if you're talking into a repeater. 145.2 MHz is reserved for Earth to space communication. The next important one for us is 145.2 to 145.5935. This is listed as FM and Digital Voice Simplex. So this is typically where you'd go to chat. If you want to use, let's say, a handheld to make some local contacts and you don't want to go through the repeater, this range is where you'd be doing it. As you'll see in the third column, not every single frequency is listed, just the important ones. You'll see some FM voice gateways as above. You'll also see a frequency for slow Morse transmissions, 145.250. The key one that all radio amateurs need to know about is 145.500. That's the FM calling frequency. This is discussed in more detail in module number 9, but basically you'd go to the frequency of 145500, put out a call for someone to talk to, that's known as a CQ call, and when someone comes back to you, you move to a mutually agreed frequency. You can step up or step down until you find a free frequency, staying in the range in the band plan that's defined as FM simplex. So you can go down to 145350, or go up from FM calling right the way up to 145.575. Anywhere between those two values is fair game to have a contact on. A couple of minor exceptions, there's an RSGB news bulletin normally on a Sunday morning, and that has a set frequency as shown in the band plan. Also, for those travelling to radio rallies or to other events, it's quite common for a talk-in frequency to be used, so that you can put in a call, maybe for directions or help with parking. Again, that's a frequency that's noted on the band plan. If there's no RSGB news or rallies, then the frequency 145525 and 550 are both available for chat. Below those simplex frequencies, at 145.5935 to 
7935, you'll find the repeater outputs. As mentioned earlier, these are paired with repeater inputs, and you shouldn't talk on a repeater output. And right at the bottom of the 2 meter band plan, you'll find some frequencies for space to earth contact, typically for the ISS. So that's a brief look at the 2 meter band plan. Let's move now to the 20 meter band plan. This is slightly more simple and follows the conventions we've seen for the 2 meter plan. So in the first column, you have the frequency, then the bandwidth, and then the usage. Again, right at the top, 14 MHz to 14.060 MHz is telegraphy, that's your Morse code. You can see centres of activity for slow Morse and low power. Next we have the data modes. At the time of recording, one of the most common data modes is FT8. And on the 20 meter band, that's on a frequency of 14.074. You'll notice at 14.099 to 14101 we have another beacon allocation, and again, no transmitting on beacons. Another common place a lot of amateurs gravitate towards is 14.125 to 14.300. In there is the centre of activity for SSB operations, or for voice contact. On 20 metres there's also the opportunity to send slow scan TV, and the centre of activity for that is 14.230 MHz. And there's also an allocation for QRP, or low power. And in the case of national or international emergencies, you can see at the bottom of the allocation there is a frequency for global emergency centre of activity. So that's a basic guide to the 20 meter and to the 2 meter band plan. Looking on the back page of the four page exam booklet, we have the frequency to wavelength conversion chart. This is covered in other modules, but basically you can put your finger along the wavelength line, move to the right until it intersects with the diagonal line, and then drop down to get the frequency. Or the other way around, put your finger along the frequency line, find a frequency you're interested in, follow the line up to the diagonal line, Move to the left, and that will give you the wavelength. The last two tables at the bottom here are the dB conversion table that we've mentioned earlier, and the frequency allocation table. Now this one's only of limited use to radio amateurs, but it can help with your exam. This is a list of who has access to what frequencies, starting at 87.5 and going right the way up to 975 MHz. This will be useful, for instance, if an exam question comes up to ask who's allowed to use the frequency 137.5. You'd look on the table, and you'd find that's for space operations and space research. Similarly, you could be given four frequencies and asked to identify which one of those frequencies is for, say, land mobile or radio astronomy. You can see the amateur radio allocation given to us here, 144 to 146 megahertz. So there you go, that's a very basic overview of the EX307, the four-page exam booklet, which you'll find on the RSGB website. I hope you found that useful, and hopefully that's demystified some of what that four-page booklet is all about. But if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us via the Essex Ham website. Thanks for watching, and best of luck with your studies. Thanks for watching this latest module of our Foundation online course. We hope you found it useful. If you're looking for some more help with your studies, we do recommend the Foundation Study Guide, available from Amazon in Kindle or paperback format. Thanks for watching again, and best of luck with your studies.